You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Shop Talk with your host, Daryl Ann Wright. Daryl encompasses discussions about the latest trends in fashion, beauty tips to fit every budget, promotional giveaways to callers, as well as deep discount codes on products shared exclusively with you. She's always looking to find the best designs out there. So please welcome the host of Shop Talk, Daryl Wright. Welcome to the show, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk, and we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Oh, I've got a great show for you today. Just hold on to your chair. I have Nick Lewis, comedian and a man of many hats. Let me tell you a little bit about Nick Lewis. For those of you who are new to this world of comedy, trust me. This man has been around for a long time. He is a legend. He's a professional comedian, an actor, a mentor, and a screenwriter. He developed and runs Star Career Attainment Youth Program. It's an entertainment and education enrichment opportunity for students, ranging from elementary to high school age, to explore personal career goals and interests. The program seeks to empower a generation of students through learning-oriented activities focused on personal development, cognitive enhancement, and the principles of success. He also produces an online media show called Spomedians, live from L.A., New York City, Charlotte, North Carolina, on Facebook, using a social media platform that highlights sports with a comedic twist. He is also the producer of Pure Comedy Labs, a live comedy show with clean stand-up comedians and gospel recording artists hosted by Nick Lewis and currently in production. Nick Lewis has performed as an actor in Slanging Birds, where he also serves as the executive producer. Deacon, Turnt with Metro Wealth Films, Heterodox with Noah Day Production, Hazardous Plays with T.R. Sterling, Pimp the Movie, which is in pre-production, Somebody's Child with GM Swirl, GMC Swirl Films, The Althea Gibson Story, where he played the lead role of the father, Jewelry Box with Misosa Productions, and Somebody's Sundance with Haji Films. His television credits, he's been very busy, his television credits, Somebody's on BET in 2008, Daddy, Big Boys of Comedy on HBO, Comic View with BET, and Deaf Comedy Jam on HBO. Nick Lewis performed in the theater productions of A Month of Sundays, Life Compromise, directed a reality comedy play, and starred in Lord, Why Do I Keep Choosing the Wrong Men, a national play that had a four-year running. You've been very busy, Mr. Lewis. Welcome to the show, Nick Lewis. How are you doing today? Wow. Wow. So I'm listening to things. I'm like, whoa, I did a lot of stuff as well. Yes, that, that's, you have. And then I guess oh. sometimes, you know, and thank you all for having me. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh my gosh, uh, and I just an never honor. had, I never just had a chance to listen to people that read and go down. I'm like, whoa, yeah. I've been busy. Yeah. You've been busy. <laughs> and, and, and with Father Day, with Father Day coming up, I'm a better father than I am of all those things that I did. Oh, that, oh, that's, that's just my greatest be- accomplishment. Oh, that's so dear to our hearts. Uh, that's a wonderful thing to be. And we thank you. All the years of entertainment that you've given us. I mean, it just, I've got so many questions for you. I'm just so excited to have you. I'm just so excited. Let me ask you first. And I'm excited excited to be here, yes. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Let me ask you something. So you've done so many things. You've done the stand-up comedy. You've done movies you've done theater so let's let's go to what was your most challenging out of those three mediums of entertainment what's the most challenging for you 
The most it's challenging, not- though, it, it was comedy. It wasn't so much as comedy. Is that, you know, I was when I started comedy in the early 90s, I was a storyteller by nature. I was a storyteller by nature. And mm-hmm. when I taped Def Jam in 96, and Def Jam changed the, uh, the rhythm and the beat of comedy. And that's what a lot of people, you know, not just doing comedy. I wrote for a lot of people. I went for a lot of comedians, and, and I rewrote their show and changed their show around. Also, I, I, I started a comedy booking agency in, like, 94, 92, and probably I booked about 400, 400 clubs, three to 400 clubs that but I was booking Monique and, and Ricky Smiley when they was making $500. So oh, I was my gosh. Comedians what? Before people were booking comedians. And yes. so Ricky Smiley, J.B. Smooth, uh, my daughter's in the back seats when they was on the road back in 92, 93, and I built like an eight-city comedy run um, that, you know, when I went to, we'll get into that. But uh, yes. when um, the question that you have, uh, it was when I went, when Def Jam they changed the rhythm and the beat of comedy. It mm-hmm. wasn't more stories. It was pow, 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 ta da ta And comedy is rhythms and beats. Uh, yeah. And what happened, I went with that after doing Def Comedy Jam, and when that started fading out and everybody was on that quick, rapid rhythm and beat, I had to ju- readjust back to my original form. Mm-hmm. And I was nervous because people was used to me like rapid fire, rapid fire, then to be able mm-hmm. to go on stage and to sit on the stool and stand there and have one bit that lasts 10 to 15 minutes, that was my transition back from um, rapid fire, fire comedy back to telling stories where people, you know, like people always say, now some of the stories that I do and the comedy bits that I do is legend from like Spider-Man, New York City, and stuff that I did on Comic View. So that probably was the most difficult um thing out of all that you read, you know, to be able to, uh, to adjust back to the original form of who I am as an entertainer. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and we don't know that, you know, as people just coming to watch you guys do your, your magic, we don't know, you know, we don't sense these changes that you, 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 all of you in your profession know, you know, everything evolves, you know, even comedy, everything, everything evolves is, mm-hmm. is what I'm hearing. Yeah. What I'm hearing. And you have to be, but, don't you think that the pendulum swings back? I mean, I I would right. want to think that it swings mm-hmm. back to the storytelling. You know that that to me is right. a really good comic. <laughs> That's what gets me laughing it's and my, makes me remember. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah so, that, so that would be one of the things. And I'm to see how difficult could it be? And I have people that ask, and we got a lot of stuff to cover. How difficult could stand up comedy be? I say, okay, this is what it is. I say, okay, I want you to just talk for an hour about absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And watch how physical draining it is just to talk for an hour about absolutely nothing. Now I say, I say, wow. I say, no, you're not done. Now go in the bathroom and turn the shower on to hot and just let the water steam. That's what the stage feel like. Now talk for nothing about absolutely nothing. Oh, my say, wow. I say, no, you're not done. You're not done. Now make sense of what you said. Wow. Now instead of making sense, now make it funny for an hour in this bathroom with the shower on and in and, and, oh. and the heat. They're like, whoa, that's crazy. I say, now, nah. no, we're not done. Now, go do it in Paducah, Kentucky. Then tomorrow, <laughs> go do it in Harlem, New York, with two oh totally different God. crowds. Yes. They're like, whoa, that's too much. I said, wow, that's right. I said, no, it's not done. Now, your back is hurting. Your kid is sick. Your car is not started. Now, erase all that out of your mental and go and deliver it to people. I said, that's what stand-up comedy is. Oh, my gosh. Oh my and goodness! When You're right. Like that, be like, whoa! I said, that's what I did for the last over the last quarter of a century. Oh my god! And that's what Canadians do. Yep. So it's it's work. I mean, this is you know we're thinking, oh, you're just it's innately work. funny. This is a whole production that you're doing. And yeah, I can just feel the fire. I, I could, When you say with that hot heat, that is very much a, a pressure cooker. You know, you're you're it's performing. Right yeah, you're performing. Then, this is your you job. You out all your emotions, all your everything, and you got a crowd that might have been just, you're expecting 50 people. Now you got five people. Now block out all those emotions. Your kids say, your loved one not answering the phone. You're going through divorce and say, okay, I'm going to block out all this because I got to go deliver to these people yeah. and make them laugh with people that I have never seen before. Oh, my gosh. My gosh. This is, oh, wow. We, we've just go gone ahead. to school. We've just gone to school right now. <laughs> We've gone to school. Listen, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to take a quick break. And I just want to process all of that, you know. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you something about Spomedians. We'll be right back. Okay. 
For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People. People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And I'm your host, Daryl Ann Wright. We are sitting here right now with Nick Lewis, professional comedian, actor, mentor, and screenwriter. And we were talking before the break. Nick was telling us, he gave a, a great analogy about what it really takes when you're doing stand-up comedy. And it is one of the hardest things anybody would ever have to do. And I want to ask you, Nick, after the break, we were talking a little bit during the break, but after the break, I want to ask you this about Spomedians. But hold that thought for a minute, because what you said was so okay. profound. You were talking about, you know, being the biggest and the best and the, the most paid and the most sought after comedian and how you wrote for some of the, well, I'll let you tell it. Who, who are some of the names that you wrote comedies uh, well, shows Well, we have for? a non-disclosure. I can't say the name. I can't say the name oh, because we have okay. a non-disclosure. Uh, but okay. I, I wrote from uh, female comedians to male comedians and, and with writing, uh, people are like, okay, write a joke. But they need to, you have to go and watch the comedian because re- comedy is rhythm and timing and beat. Comedy is rhythm and timing and beat, and each comedian have their different rhythm, they have their different timing, and you have to look at where their perspective of that comedy is coming from. Just for instance, this is in the, the head of a comedian that right. Let's just say we did a joke about a lady ran down the street, and the car flew out, and chickens fell out of the car all in the street, and she couldn't catch a chicken. Now, most of y'all have seen Kings of Comedy, but this is how you're looking from a comedic point of view. You know how um, Bernie Mac is going to tell this story. Bernie Mac going to say, oh, this old lady, you know, the chickens is everywhere. He's going to tell the point of view about what happened there, how the chicken look, and what the chicken was doing. She's trying to catch the chicken. <laughs> Do you know Steve mm-hmm. Harvey's point of view? He's going to tell what it took to get to that point. You know they just drove from Mississippi, and them chicken, they had them in the car. Everybody's <laughs> point of view to get to that point. Um, you look at like D.L. Hewlett, he's going to tell what in the, within the system of America that created, you know, and that's what it is. They want to just have chicken. And if we can't have chicken, it's the point of view telling the same story. And when yes. you're talking about writing for a comedian, you have to look at and study their point of view of how they're delivering, what makes their mind click and tick. And a lot of comedians that don't know it, and that's what they have when I come in and I write for a comedian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's the like detail of a writing. Yeah. This is this is amazing. It's amazing to even know this. You know, you're really so you're doing a little psychology. You're doing reconnaissance. You're going in there and you're figuring this person out before you can even right. find the, something funny. Mm-hmm. And 
Yeah. And, and the personality of the people. Because you look at certain things where uh, comedians, is, is some comedians, it's the physical of what happened. Some comedians, the physical of what happened. Then the lady came in there, and she picked the chicken up, and she threw the chicken in the chicken. So she, they sh- they're they delivering the comedy as what you see physically. Then you have yeah. times, well, some comedians where they go into the, the mental of it. What it is to take this first. And you know she has to be crazy. So who else would want to go get a chicken? Why she didn't throw them chickens away? You have two point of view. You have physically what you see and mentally of what they're thinking. So you have right. to decide on which way is the best way that they tell their story. Oh my goodness. This is good stuff. Yes. You know, okay. So I, I want to, I want to switch it up a little bit. Th- so you're, you're doing standup, okay. but you just gave us that great analogy about what it takes. You're in hot water. You, you know, you're going to tell a joke. You've got kids who are sick. You know, your car's not starting all kinds of things. You put all that out of your mind and you're live mm-hmm. in front of a, a, an audience. Now, what is your perspective on the comedian that's on the internet and they're funny as heck, you know, you're laughing and stuff, but do they have all that pressure? Well, I, I, I um, I think every type of form of entertainment is its own genre. I don't have anything against the new comedian that you know they call them like internet comedians, and they call them, yeah. I call them social media. And they're pretty much social media where we're comedians. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, well, once you get there, and I had a comedian, um years ago when the first internet thing started happening, I, I booked comedy clubs and he was like, you know, I got almost 20,000, I got almost like 200,000 followers. I like, okay, I don't care about the 200,000. I care about the 20 people that's in this club. Yeah. And the thing is, he went up there and the stuff that was funny on the internet wasn't funny in the club. Yeah. He's like, man, they don't want to listen. I said, no, this is what happened. Comedy is, is that, and I told him, I said, what was so cognitive is that you went up there and you said, I'm going to deliver them what I want them to hear instead of reading the audience and this is what they want to hear. Let me deliver to you what they want. I said, that's mm-hmm. right. I said, you do. I told him, you did a joke for five minutes. Nobody laughed. But you Oof. were arrogant. That's an arrogant. But you were so determined. They're going to hear this joke at the end of it. I said, now what I did, I went to the stage. I said, I'm going to go up to the stage. I was hosting the show and talk about yeah. the same thing that you want, you just talked about. And the people laugh. And I said, yeah. that's the difference when you can see the people that you're delivering it to and yeah. you're talking to somebody that's in Australia on the phone. I said, yeah. you got to read the crowd, read the technique. I said, this is what it is. I know everything that happened when I'm on the stage. When the comedians get to this point, they know when the fork, the fork fell off the table. They know when they, uh, everything starts moving in slow motion. And that's when you start reading body gestures and, 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 um, and it's just different types of technique that you're doing on stage. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I tell people, I, and, I, and I talk to young comics and I mentor a lot of, I said, you don't have to just tell people you're not laughing. I said, you don't brag about going to the club and say they laugh. That's just like a doctor said, you know, I save life. That is what you do, but you need to yeah. become better at what you're doing. Know the technique. You don't have to tell a person that y'all not laughing. You don't have a person that's talking. If you give them direct eye contact, this is just, Sign in this um, psychology, they're going to stop talking because the pressure's on them. They're like, wow, yeah. I didn't know that. I say, so it just, so but that, that's something thing. Then we're, we're back to the internet community. I, I wish the best. And some of them out there is truly funny. So, but like I got to say, there's mm-hmm. a different genre of delivering comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, and I've just now developed uh, an appreciation <laughs> for internet uh, comedy, you know, <laughs> because I, I really, you, you mentioned comedy to me and I'm going to a club and I'm going to hear somebody live. That's the way that I've always done it. You know, that's the way that I'm expecting it to be delivered. Right. But you're right. You know, there are some Internet comedians that are just hilarious. They're just crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen them in person yet. So I'm going to hold my thoughts. And, 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 <laughs> and we go back hold- to earlier in, in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Most of the, and I just call the facts of what it is. They deliver. They used to deliver it in a camera with bits and skits. But now you mm-hmm. take them in those situations that I said that you as a road comic and a veteran comic, you deal with every night. Yeah. When your kids sick, when the audience is not there, when this is the flight yeah. is not missing, when you don't have time to change, that can only get better from being on stage and having stage experience. When you have 20 and 25 years and 15 years in comedy and you know how to deal with situations. That's why yeah. I think where I work with some of the young, that's when they run into, I don't know what to do right here. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, it would suck to be them right then when nobody is laughing <laughs> and you have nothing. You got nothing to pull from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Spomedians because, I mean, I was listening okay. to that and, you know, oh, I love it. I love it. Love it. Where did you get the idea? Okay, the thing is, I, 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 in fact, I got about 15 projects. It was so crazy, and my manager, she like, Nick, and I, I met with different studios, and sometimes I met with studios, and I see my stuff on television, and not mm-hmm. get into that. But what happened, I, I, um, 
I seen two comedians, and I watched Paddles and Rhythms and Rhythms and Beats and Paddles. So there are two comedians, Fig out of New York and Mark Howard out of um, L.A. And I'm and I'm on Facebook and I'm watching and I'm seeing Paddles like, hey, when they start arguing with each other on Facebook about sports, <laughs> everybody starts tuning in. They get like 150 different type of, of response. I said, whoa, I, I, see a, I see a show. Let me write a show. So I said them on Facebook. I said, let me write a show. I see a pattern in the show. On your other thing, nobody listened. But this, so, and so that night about 4 o'clock in the morning, and Mark and I know, he's you still right. I said, my brain not going to stop until I finish right. So I wrote that show about in three hours, like 4 o'clock in the morning. I said, okay, this is what the show is. It's full meeting. I said, full meeting. We're going to take sports and comedy and mix it together. But it was going to be like, from a comedic point of view, I said, the thing is, and we're going to do it, we're going to overlay it with, um, a comedy kind of a comedy layout. I said, so the thing is, we're going over there with a the comedy layout. Like with a comedy, you have the host, you have the feature, and you have the headline. I said, those are going to be our topics. Those are going to be our topics. I said, then we're going to have I'm like, like the, okay, okay, like the open mic. Those are guests that's coming in. You, you never did comedy, but they want to battle the full media. And we got a couple other things that we have coming up where we got comedians oh, hold, that do hold, like that snaps. Hold, and hold, where they don't hold snap it right on each there, other, Nick. but they snap Nick. on each other team. Okay. okay. Hold so it right so there. Like, oh, my uh, goodness. Okay. We have to. We've got to take a break. Man, we got to take a break. Darn it. But we're going to come back. Okay. I want to keep hearing what you're listening to, okay? We'll be right back. Okay. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion. And then together, we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk. I'm your host, Daryl Ann Wright, and we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're sitting here with Nick Lewis, professional comedian. And before the break, Nick was talking about his online comedy sports broadcast of Spomedia, Spomedians. Nick, okay, so you were telling us about how that idea came to pass. You've got Fig okay. in New York, and you've got Mark in L.A., and they would argue back and forth on social media. So you had an idea. So tell us about that. And what happened, I started looking at that. I said, they're family means they know they know comedy. So I said, let me just put sports and comedy together with overlay of comedy. So we have yeah. where we have battles that come in similarly, like you would see in any type of comedy thing, like you have snap battles where uh, comedians snap on each other. I said, no, but this is not how we're going to do it. I said, we're going to have snap battle where comedians and fans, they don't snap on each other, they snap on each other team. Like, I'm going to get a Dallas fan that's going to snap on a Washington Redskins fan. We're going to, and like, whoa, nobody's ever did. Like, I said, we just, it's just coming. So we have different stuff that we, we, we that we have coming up that we haven't put out. And then the show yeah. we received almost like almost over like 3,000 likes in less than three weeks uh, on oh Facebook. And everybody's watching. This is, this is crazy. Like 60%, over 60% of the likes are from uh, women, uh, women, uh, 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 Facebook women, you know, female. I just want to make mm-hmm. sure I say the right name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we watch sports too. <laughs> and we definitely have an and opinion. They talk a lot I, of trash. Women talk a lot of trash. Uh, oh, so we got battles yes, that do. coming up. And the thing is, I said, no, we got battles over there. We got Northerners against Southerners. We got heavy <laughs> set people against long TV. We got black against white, straight against gay. We got different battles where people just come and want to battle their sport. And the thing is, not knocking anything. It's just, we, and the thing is, people love their team so much. This was for the people oh, yes. love their sports team so much that oh, none of that really means nothing. And people are like, I don't care what they are. I, and then what happened to give people saying, okay, that person is different from me, but they like it. Hate the team I like, but I like them. And that's just a lot of coding in the show. That's it. That's it. It's a genius idea. It is an absolute genius. And I will be watching for that. I, I'm a regular now. I'm going to like that and I'm going to watch it's, it. Okay, so let me ask you. Well, so, 
put that, and this is one of the things about that. And what, what happened is just not there to show. You might have people that say, I, you know, my I said, I, I'm a prejudice against this person. I might not like a gay person. But if you got a person that's gay or a person that's of a different race, and they're rooting for the teams that you love, and they hate the team that you hate, it's like a natural attraction. And that's what people don't realize. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize. I guess they're okay because they hate the team they hate, and they love the team I like. All that is coded <laughs> into, well, let, let's just go to the next week. I get to talk. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, this is good stuff. So you're building community. You really are. You're building community with this with this site because you're you're Mm -hmm. basing it on a premise that, you know, is is nationwide. Everybody loves their team. You're right. Everybody loves their team and they'll root for their team. And they may say some things on the Internet for their team (laughs) that they may not say on the job, you know, but. But uh, mm-hmm. it, it's it's a really oh it's a great show it's a great show I was listening to it uh, you, before this show you. and I love it I love it love it I'm hooked I'm just hooked <laughs> so let me ask you do you have any predictions about the outcome do you do you do you have any favorites of who's going to win this thing NBA find a quick thing we were talking about the other night I think that we're going to have to get uh, it's hard to say I think we might have to lean to. Uh, Golden State because once they yeah. won, it's one play after this one play lost a game and Golden State. This is what they think: that we can win two out of three games against anybody in the world, and that's uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's because they did it. So that's what they're looking at. So I'm looking at going with Golden State. Yeah, I think you're right, man. I think you're right. They just come out of nowhere in the last few minutes. You're biting your nails, and you're just, you know, you're like, what? You know. <laughs> but that's and, Golden and, and State. And I seen a movie one time. They told this guy, this big, this like gangster back in the black and white movie. He said, "I want you all to go kill him. I want you to kill him." So the guy, they didn't go kill him. He said, "Did you kill him?" He said, "We beat him up real bad, and we left him at the bottom of the river." And the guy came back. He said, "No, you, you, you gave him, um, you gave him opportunity. Now he's going to come back and think he's invincible." <laughs> so they, they didn't get them opportunity so now they go to state going to think they're invincible oh yeah oh yeah oh my goodness well we'll just definitely have to you know keep a look out for that okay let's get back to you let me let me let me get these movie credits in here let's slang and birds first of all the 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 title slang and birds who came up with that i came up with it slang and birds i'm telling you slang and bird i did a joke on um I did a joke like in 2001, and I said, okay, if you want to get rid of all the black people in America, all you got to do is get rid of the chicken and sell chicken like it's reefer. So this is so, so crazy. <laughs> that was my joke, and I think about like two, like, 2001, and I would do this joke on the road, and then like, they, they got to go get that bird and want that chicken. You get pulled over with 1,200 pounds of uncut chicken. So now, about two years later, that's when I started hearing rap song and then rappers, and you know, I did in mind, and like, I'm still flipping that chicken. I said, hold on. <laughs> and they was referring to drugs and chicken. I said, I'm the one that put chicken in pop culture. Nobody was talking like, and everybody loved the, the chicken joke, the chicken become illegal. And, and yes. what happened, so I said, you know what? I had this idea. This is like eight years ago, about eight, nine, eight years ago. I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot a movie about mm-hmm. my joke. It's going to be a mini movie starting me. I said, nobody ever did that. Nobody ever did a movie about their joke in a mini movie. <laughs> Excuse me. So we were able to do that, and I shot it, and that was part of a third of a show that we uh, submitted to a network, but the network was like, okay, we want it, but they wanted the content. I said, I don't want the content. I understand mm-hmm. more than just, you know, I don't just want to give you talent. I understand what is bigger than just this movie. Um, so um, then we reshot the movie, and I did another movie, and the director in Atlanta said, uh, we want to write a comedy. I said, I got comedy. I got bits. So then we shot Slingin' mm-hmm. Bird in Atlanta with Metro West Film. Um, Man are with Metro West Film. I thank them for giving me the opportunity. Uh, we shot mm-hmm. it in three days with some great actors oh. and great kid actors. Uh, and um, so that that's uh, Slingin' Bird. Oh, my gosh. So that's the first movie uh, you know, I, that I yeah. wrote, I directed, I starred in, I executive produced, oh, uh, and I, well, I co-directed. So that, that was uh, my first all-in movie. Yes. Yes. Oh, gosh. Talk about the pressure. But but the outcome, you had to have been very proud of that to see that finished product get produced. And, you know, it's right. out there and, forever. And we and and they won the Orlando, won the comedy in Orlando Urban Film Festival. And I said, I, now this is what I was telling the film studio and my manager, Cheryl Abbott in New York. I said, why am I going to make a movie and 12 people get to see it at my house? So what happened, I had built a comedy tour. So what happened, I, I built a tour and I created a tour and put my mom, put my movie on my own tour that I built. So I put the movie on the tour as a comedy show. So we would yes. go do the comedy show and people would pay to come and watch the movie. So I'm like, okay, oh, why stop God. that? I said, if I go to a regular movie, they sell commercials. So, um, and out of Atlanta, they'll work with the movie. I said, I'm going to build an advertising agent. I said, we're going to sell commercials and we're going to sell commercials at my movie while I promote my movie on my tour. 
Actually, because it's even oh, as a wire, because you can take it directly to the people. So we start selling the, uh, advertising. And we would say we had so advertising from Atlanta, Georgia. It was a liquor store. It was a restaurant in Georgia. It was another mm-hmm. person that had produced their own liquor. Now, and I told her, I said, this is why this is important. I said, in order for, you know, for business to grow, you have to advertise outside of your market. I said, I yeah. created an outlet to advertise outside your market. I said, you can't afford to advertise in these three cities, in these four cities. I said, well, what happened? We can put oh a 30 God. second commercial on this movie. Now you're advertising in Atlanta. I said, now that's what allows business to grow. And that was the whole you're thing behind Spring and Bird. That's not much to create the movie, but we're going to create a way of distribution and advertising and marketing. Oh, hold that thought. Oh, hold that thought right there, Nick Lewis. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hear more about that. We'll be right back. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom horses mystical present past and future all in one wild free domestic and healing for everyone betty hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with nature connect equine coaching Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Daryl Ann Wright, and we are sitting here this evening with a wonderful guest, Nick Lewis, professional comedian, actor, mentor, screenwriter, director. Oh, my goodness, man. You have a wealth of knowledge, and you've done it all. You've done it all. Well, I, I did a lot. Just, just you know, I've been one of those brains that just, it just, it just process. It needs to process information, process stuff, so it just go and it don't shut down. So I need, it just needs to be active. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so but, let's talk it, about. Let's shift gears. Let's shift gears. The Career Attainment Youth Program. Now, what is that about? That's um, that's my passion. That's my passion. Yeah. That's my passion. It's called Star Career Attainment Program. S T A R stands for Studio. Theater Accountability and Radio. Uh, we're at our fifth year of this program. Now I can talk about this program for hours because that's my passion. Uh, and yes. what happened is an it's a uh, it's an art program, an enrichment program, and a career program, all coded with the curriculum core, where kids are actually learning about different things that they not realizing that with sub with with hidden targets that they don't realize. And what happened? Okay. They come in with let's just go with the education. Let's the uh, the the art program starts to have a studio theater accountability and radio and four and a half hour the was it from the 12th grade and CMS school system had me to read Charlotte Mecklenburg school system had me to rewrite the program from K through 12. So the program is wrote from K through 12 with four oh, base wow. class and the curriculum core that's coded into the program. And the theme lets you go with a good star, like for studio Stu, uh, students learn how to do state, the stage blocking, they know how to give stage blocking, they know how to receive stage blocking. They know different methods of stage and how to verbal, the verbal, give emotion and how to physical give emotion. That is what they're doing, but we're coding other curriculums, other aspects, why they're not learning. This is after four and a half hours. So when we go into something like accountability, and this is how it's coded into the other class that they have. Accountability is the league of entertainment. 
the league of attainment. They're, they're from high mm-hmm. school, every grade level. They learn non-disclosure, simple contract, and copyright. And what that goes into the social science, that let them know this is why we have laws to protect us. This mm-hmm. is why we have laws to protect us as actors, as actors, and this is why you need to vote so you can have certain laws to protect you. It goes into their social science. But for them to understand a contract, they have to understand uh, comprehension, writing, mathematical. Right. Yes. Delivered. They have to understand all that. So those are covering that class. So they're doing a the contract, but what they realize, this is comprehension skill. This is mathematical skill. This is uh, this uh, um, um, contract, you have to know math. And what happens, mm-hmm. and the thing is, that's what's coded into the other class. But it all coded into one. It's like a fence link. But then you go into where we have... Uh, the, the stage blocker. And when kids get in stage by these 34 year old, and what happened is about building confidence and subliminally building confidence. What happened, they think they're giving stage blocker and we're not going to get into detail, but what they're giving is actually I'm being a leader and I want to be a leader. Cause those kids at that age, I'm going to prove to you that I can make you mess up. What they don't realize is that they're being a leader and the kids that don't want to mess up. What they really don't realize is that I can accept direction. I can accept direction. So what happened? We had the kids. Look, you can't mess me up. You can't mess me up. But uh, underline what they realize, I'm stepping the um, direction, and I can give direction. Mm-hmm. So the quiet kid now is giving direction. All this is coded into the class. So by the end of the class, he can't produce radio commercials. They do produce uh, radio commercials that were different groups. And when we first come into the class, I said, I need kids that don't get along. I don't want the kids oh, wow. that don't. Because in four and a half hours, we're going to make this team say we can beat that team. And they're going to want to be mm-hmm. one of them. I said, watching it, even with the class that we did five years uh, of this, we did high school, middle school, and we're working, getting ready to do uh, West Virginia. At the end, um, at the end of the four and a half hour, if people go to the uh, to go to the uh, Facebook page, they can see a young lady that was going through a lot of change in her life. In four and a half hour, this is what we give them hope. We give them the belief in themselves, and the thing is, they don't realize. But it goes into start career attainment. That's just going to the career part of it. Well, kids see people in front of the radio. They hear like us on the radio. They see people in front of the camera. But what we give them different careers, whether that's hair, wardrobe, makeup, sound, light, catering, security, we give them all these other options that you can do in entertainment. But they're so caught up in, wow, I didn't know I can do that. I said, sometimes the hairdresser make more money than the actor. I said, not only you can yeah. do it in entertainment, you can do it as a business, as a profession. And we bring in different people and all these things like, I own my business. I own my business. Like, wow, I didn't know that. And what happened yeah. is still a process to get to the point. I said, you, and I, say, I, said, I said, we don't tell kids, we don't come here. You just go get it and you grind. I said, everything that we do, serve a process. You get a process to get to a point. You have a process. The first thing we tell the kids uh, when they get in there, and I said, that everybody is not winner. I said, why would mm-hmm. everybody tell you that everybody's a winner? Everybody can't win. And they tell you that everybody's a winner. How many people won the Super Bowl out of 32 teams? <laughs> Isn't it the truth? How many people won the NBA <laughs> final? I did, yeah. I said, wow. I said, no, that is reality. You need to know this before you become 25. That's and right. And that's what gets their attention. But it, that's I can right. Go on it. So that, that's what the program is coded into. Um, and then we, we had great success. I heard people that's on the program that, that had done taught college for 42 years. Professor Hurt, she taught at uh, Alabama A&M for 42 years, taught college. We have people that's on the staff that managed $7 million in grants. We have we bring in actors and different people in, in the staff, like uh, for radio, they produce a radio commercial. And the thing is, I said, well, let's just bring in somebody from the radio commercial that can produce a commercial. And people are like, mm-hmm. Nick, how do you know all this? I said, my brain just coded and, and it see it and it code. And each one of these four class, I could write another uh, four class, another 10 class for. Uh, and, and we just have it coded. So what happened is like, and I tell people, it's like delivering. Um, I said, Michael Jackson, we all listen to Michael Jackson. But mm-hmm. we listen to, I listen to Michael Jackson with on the cassette. Now kids listen to yeah. Michael Jackson, it's on the phone. I That's said, the right. same Michael Jackson, but a different way of delivering it and putting the, the message in their brain. I said, I just found, came up with a different way of delivering and putting the message in their brain. So you're giving four it. and a half hours, and every kid, we had one kid, when we first asked, every kid had to come and say their name before the class. They had to say name, something about them, uh, and something that we don't know. We had one kid, it was in... Uh, Mr. see in school, so that start crying. They're like, no, she's scared. She don't like to do it. I said, no, that ain't what it is. I said, she just haven't had an opportunity. So mm-hmm. we have three and three, have an hour and a half session. At the end of the hour and a half session, we had another session. This teacher that worked, the site director, she seen that same student that would cry to say her name. I said, who would have helped me is teach other class, teach a third grader? She was the first, can I please teach you? Can I please teach you? She said, Mr. Lewis, what is she doing? I said, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, but we have an exact to get to a point. 
I see yes. that's how every kid should leave when they leave here. And that's how every kid have left. Because what happens oh, is with this, and this is what we feed them that they don't realize. Oh, wow. This, oh, that's good stuff. That's that's wonderful. Star Career Attainment Youth Program. That is wonderful. It is and wonderful. No, now, does, no, this, does this run in no the summer? Is this a summer this program? program? I'm I sorry? I personally sell my DVDs, and all the DVD sales go to the money. If it didn't see in that school system, it's already part of the school system. Uh, the thing is, because this is how I came up with it. And I think my mod- our motto is our kids have um, dreams and vision. We can provide them with opportunity and resource. And because we had yes. we had we had parents when I was doing the doing this over twenty five years in entertainment. We had parents like, I want to get my kid into theater, I want to get my kid in, in into radio. Then where do you yeah. go? There's nowhere to go. So there's, there's nowhere no to turn. I said, there's something that I can get back there. These kids people know that it's free. But what happens you hear some type of advertising at the hotel, then they'll go out there and they'll spend two and three thousand dollars because the love of their kid, they don't mind and they'll just get taken. Most of the people that get taken is people with certain economics or certain uh ethnic that get taken at these programs, and they don't have that mm-hmm. opportunity. You just can't go to a radio station. You can't go to a TV station. So I call friends of mine. I said, look, I got this crazy idea. I'm going to write this program. I'm going to give it to um, the the kids in Charlotte for free. A year later, I mean with the people that like people that represent the state of Alabama, and they're looking to put the program in, in middle and in, in junior colleges. So I'm like, what have you wrote? Oh, I said, I don't know. But, but go ahead amazing. with the next question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That was just amazing. It's just amazing. You are, oh my goodness, your brain doesn't stop and we don't, definitely don't want it to. <laughs> don't, keep, the, keep the good stuff coming. And the thing is, in <laughs> fact, I mean, this, all the stuff I said, this is what I've done. And like I say, when, because right now we talk with, uh, we're going to West Virginia to do the program in West Virginia. This uh, We don't have enough staff for the program. Um, and the thing is now, and I'm I telling somebody, I, said, I don't have the time for school media. I got to go to this program. And I just got, in fact, tonight I got to look through the, um, Pure Comedy Laugh, that's like a clean comedy show. I started about 10 years ago. Okay, and it's hold that, a clean hold comedy that thought. Show. Nick, Nick, okay. hold, hold that thought. We got to go to commercial break and please these sponsors. Hold on. We'll be right back. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted. And every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing, and it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. We are so excited this evening. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk, and we're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Daryl Ann Wright, and I'm sitting here soaking all of this information and knowledge up from Nick Lewis, professional comedian, actor, mentor, screenwriter, and director. And before the break, we were talking about his Star Career Attainment Youth Program that he runs in the summers for, for right now in Virginia. You're getting ready to get started in Virginia. And 
you know, West Virginia. West Virginia. You, you're just amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You During the break, you were telling me about how your brain just needs stuff to process. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> Let, let me ask you this. So you were you um, have done this comedy, the stand up comedy for HBO back mm -hmm. in the day. You were doing Deaf Comedy Jam. You were doing Big Boys of Comedy. What was that like working with the network of HBO? What was that like for you? That, that was that was incredible. That was incredible uh, mm -hmm. because I, I did Deaf Jam in 90, 96, 95, 95, era in 96. And just to be there, and then I'm sitting, and I'm on the elevator with with, uh, with Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey and, and Chris. I'm like, whoa! And I did Def Jam All Star Year, so all these comedians were just in the back, and that was just crazy. Just being around those talent, level of talent of comedians, and just saying, okay, uh, I'm a part of that. And then now I realize uh, that, that you know, thanks for Bad Boys and for Comic View, but Def Jam, that would be a, that, I tell people, Def Jam is the comedy, where Motown is the music. Mm -hmm. I said, it changed it changed it changed the culture of it, and I say I'm one of those people. And like somebody say, would you always be a Def Jammer? There is no more new Def Jam. So that was incredible yeah. uh, to be a part of Def Jam. And I'm looking at the 25th anniversary, and they show about 10 seconds to me on the 25th anniversary, and I got a check from it. <laughs> oh wow! Yay! <laughs> That's always That's good. Always good. Yes. Yes. But, you know, that really, I think though that era, the Deaf Comedy Jam, the HBO, the Bad Boys of Comedy, Comic View, that really, yeah. I think, put comics on the map. I mean, you guys have been in clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen you in nightclubs. We've seen you all over the country, you know, even all over the world, really. But it was on HBO, for me at least, I can only speak for me, that, you know, comedy really opened up. You know, people right. were running to HBO. They wanted to see a new comic come up. They wanted to see their favorites. You know, they wanted to see that. Right. You know, and HBO found they found a good they found a good time for it too. You know, it was after the kids went to right. bed. You know, so you, you know, you could really sit back and have a little cocktail and enjoy yourself. You know, and I just appreciate I, that. I, yeah, go, no, ahead. go ahead. I was just saying, I wish it would come back. No, I said, I, I said, I take, I take Def Jam uh, the night after my Def Jam air because uh, I had a job. I had a job, job in, in you know, management and management. I graduated from college, Troy State, uh, in, in Troy, Alabama. And then, and, and the year before, I'm like, okay, I think I'm gonna do it. So I, let, I you know, I went for that job, uh, you know, to go for my uh, career. And the the night after I take Def Jam, when it went off after the end, my phone started ringing. It started ringing. It started ringing because the people that take Def Jam. And they phoned and ring like mine, and I haven't worked for anyone since then. And, and you know, it, it's been great. And I tell people it's longevity. Uh, it's not so much how, um, you know, I remember one comedian. This was Ronaldo Ray. He passed now. Ronaldo Ray. I used to open. He like Lewis, Lewis, Lewis. I said, yeah. He said, what you want out of this comedy thing? I said, I want to be rich and famous. He said, no, what you want is longevity. There's a lot of mm -hmm. rich and famous people sleeping on other people's couches. I'm like, whoa, That's it. that was, and that changed my uh, aspect of that. And yes. um, and then the thing, like I said, I quit my job, and 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 and, and, and back then it was different. Def Jam made you a star. So Nikki, you were telling us about um, Def Comedy Jam and how that really made you a star. You know, it puts you on the map, and uh, mm -hmm. you know. And so Nikki, okay, I want to apologize for that. Uh, there, I want to apologize for that. I enjoying this radio show. But that was a money call, and I had to click on <laughs> I got kids in college. I had to click over this money call. So if my call dropped, I said, that, so they might be mad, but they're not getting ready to send me no check. But I got to take this money call. <laughs> but I apologize. I had oh to take God. the money call. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> you are so funny. Yeah. Okay. But you were you were telling us, Nick. You were telling us about um, Deaf Comedy Jam and how your phone was ringing off the hook, and somebody told you that you know you want longevity. You don't want to just be rich. You want longevity yeah. in your career, <clears throat> right? And I let not just not just longevity, not just be rich. That's nothing that come with it. Uh, he was saying that what yeah. you want. He said what you want out of this career. I, I said I want to be rich and I want to be famous. He said no, you want longevity. There's a lot yeah. of rich and famous people that are now sleeping on other people's couches. And longevity, mm -hmm. to build a career for longevity. And that's why I'm here like 30 years later, my phone still ring. And I know comedians that have made bigger money than me and had bigger names than me that no longer is in the business. Mm -hmm. And one way he said, and the thing is taking advice from people, that I think that's what it is with the like, new comedian. 
not taking advice from the generation that before you. He said, one way to make longevity is to learn everything. You don't want to be the comedian. You want to be the one that booked the comedian. You be the one. You don't want to be in the movie. You want to be the one that produced the movie. You want to write the movie, direct the movie, so that you're constantly getting paycheck. You want to write plays, yeah. theater, radio. So when my daughter was young and everybody moved to L.A. and I stayed and raised my daughter, I still took 18 years of not going to L.A. and they called me and I said, I want to learn everything about this business. So taking that, uh-huh. then I was able to write it into the program and, and be able to go from there. Yeah. Yeah. And that program that you're talking about, the Star Career Attainment Youth Program, that thing right there. Oh, my goodness. We're going to take a quick break, but oh, I'm so proud of you for doing that. I'm just, oh, my goodness. We're going to take a break. We'll, we'll be right back. And I want to ask Matt, uh, Nick a whole bunch of other questions. We'll be right back. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Shop Talk, and I'm your host, Daryl Ann Wright. We're coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio. And I just want to tell you, this has been so much fun being the host tonight, listening to all of the wealth of knowledge of Nick Lewis, professional comedian, actor, mentor, screenwriter, and director. Ah, Nick, thank you so much for coming on the show. <laughs> Listen, in this this last little few minutes that we have with you, you know, is there something that you want to tell mm-hmm. us? Anything, any knowledge that you want to leave with us that we can just soak well, up? Well, I have I have entertainers that you know constantly uh, come to me and they're like, okay, what in, in information, what advice you would give it? And it's a great advice that the guy used to be the drummer for like Rick James. I didn't know this until like a year after he passed that he was a drummer. And I had a, I was supposed to do an audition for a play, and then they moved the audition from a Tuesday to a Wednesday. I said, now I got to pay for another hotel room. I got to stay over here. I got to spend I got to spend seventy five dollars. So we was riding the car. He said, how much you got to spend? I said seventy five dollars. Then he asked me, how long you been doing comedy? I, I said about fifteen years. He said, okay. Okay, okay. Then he was native by five years later. He asked her, You think you worth seven and a half million dollars? I said, Yeah. He said, Okay. In five more minutes. He said, Do you think if I gave you $750,000 $750, that you worth that? I said, Yeah. He said, What about $7,500? I said, Yeah. You think you worth $7,500 after 15 years? I said, Yeah. He said, Why would somebody invest $750 in you and you won't invest $75 in yourself? If you want to invest in yourself, what makes you think someone else would invest in you? That's mm-hmm. why I tell entertainers and people that entertain it in any job that they're doing, invest in yourself first, and mm-hmm. then people will come invest in you. And that's what happened with everything that I'm doing with the program with Spo Meet. And we got a production team in L.A., a production team in New York and Charlotte. We got people on my staff that got more degrees than, than I can name. And these mm-hmm. people came and said, we believe in what you're doing and what you're about to do. And we want to invest in you because you invest in yourself. Oh, my goodness. And we're taking that straight to the heart. Straight to the heart. Thank (laughs) you for those words of wisdom. Now, on Facebook, we can reach Nick Lewis at Comedian Nick Lewis and Spomedians. That's those are your uh, Facebook handles. You're also on YouTube. Your stand up comedy is on YouTube. Uh, if you go to YouTube and type in Nick Lewis, comedian, oh, you're going to have a good time, right. people. A very good time. Um, hey, let me say are, this. Uh, I want to say this. And then and, and, uh, probably like 15 percent of my shows is church shows and clean comedy show. But that's just <laughs> what they want to coast go there. And I tell people, like, yep, I curse on my show and I, I do clean comedy show. I said, that's like Denzel. He did a movie in training day. He shot five people. The next movie, he played an angel. That's not who I am. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, he did. <laughs> okay. So, oh, sir, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on our and show. 
Oh my goodness. We're looking forward to all of your projects. We want to see, you know, uh, your comedy right. special that you're doing. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, hopefully that thing will come out of production very soon. We're poised, willing, and ready to see that. Um, do you have any shows coming up? Uh, any stand up comedy coming up? Can we catch you yes, anywhere? I have shows. Yeah, but the thing is, I just came back from Chicago, uh, okay. Chicago, Atlanta, different different clubs. I'm back at the club. So this weekend, I'm here in Charlotte. Pretty much every weekend, I'm working somewhere in the world. Um, you know, that's so I could just go. What you could do is go and Google Nick C. Lewis. Go go and Google comedian Nick Lewis. It'll take you to my Facebook page, and I have all the links to all the different projects on my Facebook page. We have trailer to uh, uh, Sling and Bear. We have the uh, the episode of. Uh, Spo medium, and in fact, I copyrighted the word Spo medium. It never exists in human language. I copyrighted it. <laughs> oh my copyrighted. gosh! Go. Oh wow, that go, is go amazing! Ahead. Amazing! Amazing! Yes, and only yes, your. Sir. I'm going to call you a computer brain. I hope you're not offended, but <laughs> that's what it is. Only your computer brain could come up with that, you know. And so that no, is going to be it, in the dictionary someday. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, nobody ever came up with spo media. I said, nobody ever said this word before. I said, I came up with new words, spo media. And then the thing is, a copywriter got all that copyright, my program is copyright. And that's one of the things that we talk with students about, you know, copyright yourself. We want to educate you in a different stuff. And just not that. And then people in general, uh, you know, just go through the process, you know, of, of um, you know, what it takes. And realize everything with a process. Yes. Don't worry about getting it step D and step five. Worry yes. about getting one to two. And everything yes. else, we get take care of self. Then two to three. Yes. Yeah. Reach, so. reach comedian Nick Lewis on comedian Nick Lewis on Facebook. You will see all of his projects. Um, Spomedians is also on Facebook. Go there. I'm telling you, it's a lot of laughs. You leave your comments. You're going to love it. You'll be hooked. Nick Lewis, thank you so much, sir, for coming on today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will be watching out for your programs to come. And uh, I just want to say out there for all of you listening, if you're ever thinking about getting into stand up, you know, listen to this show, listen to it again and again and get these words of wisdom because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Folks, we are completely out of time. I want to say thank you so much. And I love you. Come back next Tuesday. We're going to have a, a great show for you again. Ah, take care, everybody. Bye bye. This has been Shop Talk with your host, Daryl Ann Wright. Tune in each week as Daryl focuses on identifying designers, influencers, writers, entertainers, models, or everyday people parlaying their natural talents right here on Daryl Wright's Shop Talk. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.